Of course, we're talking with the great Jim Norton, who is our guest here today. And of course, Mr. Dave Landau. Hello. There he is. And uh, Jimmy, we're talking about uh, The Irishman. Yes. Which uh, just last week premiered on Netflix, so everybody's watching it. So Most people in two sittings. Sure. Three and a half hours. A long film. It is a long film. But um, we were talking yesterday. Uh, we liked it. It was, it was good. It, 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 when, you, when you put it against, which always happens with Scorsese, sure. some of the Raging Bull, <laughs> yeah, of Taxi course. Driver, uh, uh, Goodfellas, Casino, things like that. Um, it's almost like you're trying to recapture something. You know, that lightning right. in the bottle kind of a thing, especially when you bring on the likes of De Niro, Pacino, sure. Pesci. Um, I tell. I tell, oh God, who was yeah. just fucking... The, I think some of the best performances in that movie were the understated ones. Pesci... Is unreal in He it. comes out of fucking retirement, yeah. does this, and he's amazing. It was it. so fucking good. They were all good, but Pesci, yeah. uh, you know, I, I watched it I, in the theater. I saw it. I went to the premiere. And I, oh. I took one piss through three and a half hours. And, but I couldn't enjoy it because I, I enjoyed the movie, but I kept going, you know, where am I? Where am I? When? Oh, where? Well, just waiting for you. I to... can't enjoy it. That is, yeah. It's got to be very odd waiting for you to pop up. Oh, it's the you worst. You relieved when you finally had that scene? Yes. They left more of it in than I thought because you just was... stand up and go. Hey everyone! I did. I, I I did. I stood up, and I was like, "Hey everybody! Guess who? Guess who? Bob! <laughs> Remember? Bob! Look!" So I was. Uh, I knew it was in. I told you the night before. I saw Ray Romano at the Comedy Cellar. He goes, "Hey, great job!" Like he's the one who. Oh, wow. That was my uncle Paul, but he more confirmed for me that I was there. Uh, so watching it now, I'm just kind of perusing it at home casually. I'm loving it because I have no pressure, and, and right. I'm just enjoying it now. Watching it because I already know where I am and how yeah, long yeah. it is and whatever. You can pay attention. I can't yeah, believe how many people. Mono's great. He's, He's fucking incredible. awesome. I, I, who thought you watched that stupid fucking uh, Ray Romano show there years ago? And he's just another comic playing right. himself Sitcom, and yeah. stuff. It was good. But the fucking guy can act. Really good. You've seen him everything he's been in. Uh, what other? He was in. Uh, he was in vinyl. He vinyl. Was in, that was it. Man of a certain age was actually a good show. Kind yeah. Of, for yeah. What yeah. Was. Yeah. They pulled that on. Dramatic, from, right? Kind dramatic of dramatic. Role. Yeah. Scott yeah, Bakula was on that. it. It was a pretty good show. And then I saw him down at the cellar about a year ago, and his stand-up is great. Yeah, he's a great comic. Like uh, really fucking under, not underestimated, <laughs> or I think maybe underrated. Underrated, yeah, of course. Uh, even though he's, you know, he's made a fortune on TV, but some pretty shitty comics have uh, also. Sure. Uh, but you know, the guy is, is definitely, he's not just put in there because he's a no. name. He's Ray Romano. The guy can fucking act. It was full of really good actors. We were talking about that uh, guy that played Capone in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, he's great, yeah. And he's just an amazing actor. The guy is great in everything I've seen him in. Oh, yeah. Did you know Sebastian as a comic before the scene? What, oh, yeah. I've, you... no, I've known Sebastian since... 2001. Because you never know with cuts. Then did you? Were you guys filming the scene together? Oh yeah. At the time, okay. So I saw Sebastian walking over, and uh, I, I knew he was. In. Originally, I had heard Bobby Cannavale was playing Gallo. Crazy Joe, yeah. But it, it turned out it was Sebastian, which it was great. I mean, I know Bobby too, but I'm I know Sebastian longer. And I'm more just like him on the. He stand. looks so much yeah. like him. Yeah, when he comes in with the sunglasses, it looks, on, it's I googled so it and I was like, wow, it's, like, it's parallel. It was fun to to work with someone who was just as big a nervous wreck, like you know the comic. <laughs> That's it, why I was wondering. It was great watching because he was like a fucking. Like, <laughs> so doing it with him, I kind of felt like a nice bond with Sebastian because, again, I know him and. I I understood that he was my main interaction in the scene, so it was weird doing stand up in front of another comedian. That was Rickles' jokes. I felt like I was stealing in a way. That's so weird. I was wondering that. Like I wanted to ask you about that scene. You're doing Rickles, you're doing his jokes. Yeah. Uh, were you were you doing, or did did were you directed to do an impression? No, you know what it is? It's like they they hired me without having me do anything. I just had to meet with Scorsese, and I got hired. Um, I didn't want, like, I did it, like, I tried to get some of his mannerisms and cadence, but I can't get my voice exactly like him, and I didn't want to do, like, a bad impression, like, that seemed to right, seem right. funky. Um, so I did it kind of like, I, I worked on it a little bit before, uh, in the 10 days leading up. Hey, you Jew cocksuck! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's my wrinkles. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> I, I did it wrong at first. Like wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, you're all just a bunch of hockey pucks. And they said that's wrong. The words are right, but, but your yeah, your delivery is just awful. There was a uh, there was a script, of course, what he said that night. But I brought like an extra two pages of Rickles jokes. Oh wow! I had seen him doing roast. I had seen him do on stage like some <laughs> clips, uh, old thing, because I didn't want the extras to get so bored with hearing the same thing. So they told oh, me. Oh, so awesome! Scorsese said, just go up there and do some material, do some Rickles stuff. And I was like, thank God. I had it written down on a paper. I kept oh, looking at the paper. Shit. Yes. But I, ju- I had extra, and I did the scripted stuff, which was, uh, you know, the Italians, not those Italians, and uh, he mocks throwing a bottle. But the one they actually used the line about, are you Jewish, do you want to be? That was one I just picked up from fucking oh, listening to Rickles. Really? So I actually got an extra joke in there that wasn't in the script. We take, you know, a Mexican broad takes a rock and thwack. Uh, That's awesome. You like Colin rewriting the script to <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. I did. They, they're like, we don't need Rickles <laughs> to hang out with Frank Sheeran. But I wrote a whole extra scene. A whole extra scene where... where me, him, and Pacino are sitting there, and they're just talking, and I sit there for the photo, and they're like, that's not how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, that was, uh, I was so happy they left it in, man. You, you knew Rickles a bit, right? Very casually. I mean, literally, I, I met him. We did the Tonight Show together. I did a sketch, and then Rickles was a guest, and I had a sketch. Yeah, I and he, he liked me after. I talked to him in the dressing room, and uh, I, I, on the way off the stage, I saw him. And he's like, really funny, Jim. I'm like, thanks. He's like, you do me better than I do me. I was like, oh, thanks. Sure. I guess he saw the resemblance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never really, noticed resemblance until I saw, yeah, like you on the stage. I've heard it my whole career. Yeah. And I never studied Rickles. I was a Richard Pryor fan and Carlin. Yeah, Rickles was obviously that kind of showbiz, sure. Vegas type thing. It wasn't the, um, oh, yeah, there's a picture. It wasn't that underground kind of um, uh, rebellious comic like Pryor or Carlin. In a way, though. I mean, ballsy, yeah, you know. Yeah, well, but the thing is, it wasn't that outrageous back That's then. That's a good point, yeah. It, it was, and he was known for it, but telling racial jokes and sex jokes and things like that uh, wasn't as shocking back then. But, but like crowd work and insult comedy, I think, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. one was doing what he was doing. and Missing off the fucking... Yeah, saying, talking shit to Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. And the so, mafia. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly, make you feel at home and they're doing machine yeah, guns. he's yeah. doing machine <laughs> guns. Here's how you know how funny Rickles is. I watched him do a... Uh, a tribute to Clint Eastwood. And Clint Eastwood, everyone in fucking Hollywood is there. Yes, yeah, see, I was really AD there. That was in Montreal. Uh, yeah, but um, you can see, it looks like an old man you, though. Yeah. I, mean, I see the resemblance. It's definitely in the side of the face. Enemas. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, well, not necessarily coffee, but uh, <laughs> we'll call it that. Uh, I, w- I was fucking... Um, Watching him do it, he he roasted Clint Eastwood, but it was an Eastwood tribute. Clint Eastwood is on a stage with his mother at a table, like. You got to be fucking clean. Oh, and Rickles God. obviously was pre-planned, but Rickles stands up and they mic him, and he's just standing up in the middle of the audience at a table, shitting on Clint Eastwood, and it was so goddamn funny uh, and confident and tasteful, like it worked. No one was uncomfortable, but that's how you know how fucking funny he was. That that's a rough gig, man. No shit to be shitting on Eastwood in front. I mean, and again, he was Rickles, but still, it was really. It was that's how I. Yeah. Was it for like was, a Kelly's Heroes thing too? So they're trying to like. Promote oh, they were it? both in that. I don't know. I mean, this was in probably the late '80s. I mean, it oh, wasn't okay. like it was. But the way he would attack Scorsese at these things. Uh, oh, yeah, the clips of uh, him off camera is the complete opposite of the character. Oh. He played in Casino when he uh, when he would uh, roast Sammy when they did that the joke. Oh yeah, we just rub his face. Go, does this come off? <laughs> <laughs> we had he would have his guy come on stage. He had some black guy that worked with him, and the guy would come out to ask him a question on the stage. And Rickles would always go, "Problem with the bags?" <laughs> so, the fucking timing, man. Oh, God geez. damn, was he That's funny? Right. I think. What did he say to Sammy once? He goes, "I think he wants you to go. Uh, Sinatra wants you to go upstairs and tap dance while he shaves." <laughs> Holy. <laughs> That's shit. one of my favorite lines. It's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. When you, um, uh, you're talking about uh, uh, being a comic on a set like that. Uh, most comics, yeah, we've seen the likes of Rich Voss get nervous. Uh, and, and, and the other comics that have been in movies get all, you know, nervous about what they're doing. That, it, dude, it, 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 it's one of the most anticipated movies that have come out in years. Yeah. And you're in it. 
Uh, when you're standing there, how, lo how long were you on set? few hours. It was at Gotham Comedy on 23rd Street. Oh, it was? Okay. It made it look like the old Copa. I was yeah. shocked how good that looked, because you told me it was Gotham. Yes. And I, you couldn't wow, tell. Wow, you couldn't tell, tell, right? At all. You couldn't tell at all, no. You could not tell that was shot there. Uh, it, it was so uh, what do you crazy. Do? Like, fall into it and go... You start doing it. It's embarrassing, but it's like, wow, fuck it. It's it, De Niro's there. Pesci's there. De Niro, I was fine with because again, I, I've just you done stuff. Spank me, and I, like I know he likes me. So, but I told you that when uh, Scorsese wanted, when the turnaround camera was on him and Pesci. Uh, he had me do my own material because he wanted. They said, but as Scorsese goes, Mr. De Niro has requested that you just do your material now oh, because he wants to laugh. He wants to hear something he hasn't heard yet. Oh. Uh, he wanted like a real reaction. So I was just up there and it murdered because it was fucking no. They hadn't heard it yet, so they were happy to not have to listen. You know, as a oh, fucking right, stand up. Right. Wow. I've never been happier to do jokes. Uh, to be able to do that, also like you're called on to do your own shit yeah. because you need to make people laugh. They better fucking laugh. Oh, wow, course. that's some pressure. It was a great game. I was I knew it would kill because Definitely. they were all everyone knew what was happening and uh it was it was just fun to do real material and that I was completely confident in. Oh yeah. Even though I was dressed like Rickles. Um <laughs> yeah, I couldn't look. Uh and they had Home to over. <laughs> I had to pause. Like there was a pause, I would do the jokes, and then they had to pause so Pesci and De Niro could do their dialogue. When I walked in, seeing him Scorsese and De Niro together, oh. I, the three was just the three of them and me when I walked in the room and I wanted to I I've never wanted a photo so no bad. Shit. But you can't do it. Anyone that thinks I have no self control, I saw those three That's standing the there in, in the gangster hats, and I'm like, ah, fuck, do I want this? But you just can't. It's, no. I'm in the movie, much more important. It took Hollywood how many years to get those three in a room no. together? Oh my yeah, God. It's the, it's, yeah, it's the greatest. Hey guys, how about a pick? You just, hey, uh, it, you, you'd be a real douche. You would be a douche. Afterwards, I got Scorsese on the way out, and my dumb Rickles makeup, I, I had to do it. I oh, got yeah, Scorsese. Yeah. I'm gonna let my head's cut off. I guess you couldn't post it until after. Uh... Oh yeah, and he wouldn't care. He was very nice. Oh oh okay. Yeah uh, yeah. Kimmel brought it up on. I couldn't fucking believe it. He Kimmel mentioned it. It was uh, they were talking. To, he was interviewing Scorsese, and he mentioned. The, and he goes, yeah yeah. Jim Norton played Rickles because he was talking about the comedians in it. Whoa! I didn't even know it till the next morning. And Sam played. I was really shocked. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, whole thing's been great, man. I, I I'm just happy. Oh fuck yeah! I'm just happy, dude. That is. One of those things, knowing you for as long as I have, yes, uh, has been a chore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, no, no, it is a tease. Knowing you for how long I've known you, I, I've just seen this guy, uh, a comic, with uh, you've never been shy about talking about your dreams and aspirations right. over the years, and then you oh, they come to fruition. <laughs> I mean, that you actually, <laughs> but you it's actually wind up doing these things. You wind up. Uh, uh, meeting Kiss and 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 being friendly and hanging out with Ozzy and fucking uh, making it. You're in a movie with De Niro, Pacino, fucking Pesci, uh, directed by Scorsese. This is insane. It's like living a child, but it's fr it's weird though. Like, cause I I was in LA recently and I was I was seeing. John, my manager, and, and Jen, my ex-girlfriend. She's my best friend. She lives out there. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. And. Uh, like, I'm texting with Ozzy, you know how that goes, and sure. I'm trying to have lunch, I'm about to have lunch, and he's asking me if I'm in L.A., and I'm like, yeah, and he goes, why don't you come over, I want you to hear the new album. Oh! He's like, do you remember the address? I'm like, yeah, he's like, just come over, so I'm like, fuck, I gotta cancel remember lunch. Remember the address? He tattooed it on his <laughs> fucking hand. I literally I told John, we had just sat down, I said to Jonathan, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Tell Jen, I'm sorry. <laughs> literally, if it's the last time I would have seen either of them alive, <laughs> I would have said, look, I'll send you a nice text after. I couldn't have run out of there fucking fast enough. But it's like 13-year-old Jim Norton's dream. You got to listen to the album. With him in the room. Just me and him in a room. Yeah. How is it was fun. I loved it. Of course I loved what it. What I think right. is amazing, though, is I read, I read your books. In your first book, you talk about how Kevin James is leaving the comedy cellar and going to hang out with Joe Pesci and how you guys lead completely different lives yeah. and how self-deprecating you are that he's even near Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah. And now you are. That's got to feel pretty fucking... Well, him and Kevin were friends. He got me the picture. That's why I didn't oh, bother no, Pesci for a picture, because I got one outside the cellar. He's got a cigarette hanging in his mouth. I'm like, Kevin could... And Kevin is such... I'll always love Kevin... If Kevin James praised the Irish 
Irishman and trashed me, I would still love fucking <laughs> Kevin James. Yeah. I'll never not love Kevin James for that moment. He's been, you know, the fact that he did that, like, he didn't have to. I mean, yeah, he's so no, much no. of a bigger comic. He's just a, he's a great guy. So, yeah, he got, Ow. he made that happen. Yeah, just amazing, though. I mean, it's fucking, uh, it was very cool watching it. Cause Thanks, yeah. Obviously, no one knows Thanks, when, sure. when it comes about. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, boom, there's Jimmy on stage. It's so fucking cool. Yeah, it's, it's humiliating in a weird way, too. Like, I'm always embarrassed when I do something that's good. Yeah. Oh, so. I, always, I get fucking so. It's no okay. One. Let other people show you the scenes they did with Scorsese. That's a good <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. No one, uh, I, I've never seen a comic uh, with any self confidence. So no. it's, nope. of course, you're going to think, you know, oh, it's embarrassing. You can't take compliments ever. No. It's one of those things. Oh, no, 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 no. it's one of the, And yeah. Rickles had confidence, too. He was one of the few. I don't know about offstage. But right. Stage might, maybe offstage he yeah. didn't. You know, Jimmy fucking looks like the, uh, the epitome of confidence up on stage when you're doing your shit and r r controlling a fucking crowd in front of you. But, you know, offstage, we're all a little... Yeah. A little overcritical of I'm ourselves. A frightened, mushy-titted rabbit. <laughs> <laughs>